like to call this Committee of Adjustment meeting held on October 28, 2020 to come to order at 7 p.m. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Vander Willen, seconded by Rick. All in favor? Carried. Are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest this evening? I see none. I'd like to present the Committee of Adjustment meeting minutes dated September 23rd, 2020, be adopted as present. I have a mover and a seconder. Moved by Lauren, seconded by Henry. All in favor? Carried. Welcome to this Committee of Adjustment meeting <clears throat> to allow the public an opportunity to express their views in regards to the proposed minor variances and consents within Springwater Township. Each applicant and their agent, if applicable, will be given the opportunity to present the applications to the committee in public. Additional information on each application, including any presentation materials, is available, is available in the committee agenda on the township website. Those members of the public who registered to make oral submissions prior to 4.30 p.m. Yesterday, October 27, 2020, they will be given the opportunity to do so through the Zoom application. All oral submissions will be included in this meeting minutes and form part of the public record, including the name and address of the speaker as information collected under the Municipal Freedom of Information Protection and Privacy Act. The minutes of this meeting will also be posted on the Township website. All comments and questions all comments or questions should be addressed through the chair. I will now ask the Secretary Treasurer to introduce the first application, item 4.1. Minor Variance Application A1220, submit, submitted by M. McKechnie, owner of lands known municipally as 75 Trail Boulevard. The purpose and effect of the application is to permit the construction of a covered deck 56.7 square meters in size, and a detached accessory building, 35.7 square meters in size, on the subject property, which will result in a maximum lot coverage of 38.5%, whereas the bylaw permits a maximum of 35%. Thank you. Has there been any additional correspondence or comments re been received? Comments from the township senior engineering technologists were received on October 21st, advising that there is potential for the proposed structures to conflict with the existing underground soakaway pits and further recommending that the applicant contact RJ Burnside and Associates for information regarding such to verify that the integrity of these drains is not compromised during the construction. The chief building official provided comments on October 28th stating that he has been advised that the applicant has reached out to the development engineer for comment on the LID and Sokoway trench location and suggesting that final decision on the minor variance wait until such time as acceptable comments are received from the development engineer. Thank you. Can I have the applicant introduce themselves and provide any comment and their, and their, their proposal? Hi, sorry about that. I believe I was still muted. Uh, okay, yeah, my name is just Hold on. Sorry. Do you want to just hold on a second there? Can you start again, please. When you were muted for us. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, Michael McKechnie speaking. I, as stated, I live at 75 Trail Boulevard in Springwater. Um, we've had a number of family moving in and uh, into the neighborhood and in the area, and we're just, you know, reconsidering our backyard and decided to kind of add a pool and a bunch of other features to make it a nice hub for the, you know, <clears throat> basically everyone to come to our place. Uh, we have been advised that, yeah, the Sokoway pipes 
may be interfering, I think, with the deck structure. I did witness them during installation. I have not yet heard back from uh, Tom Hardy, the town's engineer, uh, consulting engineer. Um, in my opinion, these these structures could be moved if necessary. It's probably more of a building permit issue, but uh, I'm in no rush to complete this work. I'm planning to do it in the spring, so over the winter I'll probably just be preparing for permits. So if there's a need to delay that, that's okay. Um, I, I don't believe it's necessary if you want to deal with it now, but I guess that's up to the council. Thank you. Are there any uh, members of the public registered to make any oral submissions? Thank you, Chair. No members of the public have registered to make an oral submission for this application. Thank you. Any members of the committee wish to make any comments or any questions? Mr. Webster? Thank you, Chair Gannon. Um, but just for clarification, the the information received from Claude Marchand, what, when did we actually receive that? Because I, I don't remember that I had this when I went out to look at the site. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, the comments received from Claude Marchand were received on October 21st. Go ahead. Comments are typically not provided until the public meeting is in session. Comments are typically not provided until the public meeting um, to the committee members. We did receive them on the 21st as part of the circulation to engineering. Go ahead. Forgot how to operate these things. Mr. Chair, <laughs> through you again, Mr. Chair, I just say that this is a reasonable comment, I guess, but if, as a member of the committee, if I'm going out to a site and this is a concern and I have to, I should view this to see if it's a concern. I understand that engineers will pass, wave some magic wand, but um, the adjacent property is um, uh, covered in um, unistone, if you will, uh, at least half of the backyard. And... So I would guess that if uh, if there's an LED uh, problem here uh, and there's no problem with all these pa paving stones in the backyard of the adjacent property, I'm I'm, I'm concerned that you know we can't do both. We, we either it either has to be okay or it can't be okay. And LED, you know, I mean, what? Um, I, I'm, I'd like to be able to see for myself what the drainage issues are uh, when I when I go look at the property and not now have be forced with making a decision or in this case a deferral, which seems to be that's where we're headed. So uh, I'd appreciate having these comments before I go look at it. I I can't look I can't look at it now that I've already been there. Thank you. Thank you, Planner. Through you, Mr. Chair. Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Typically, these comments are received as part of the notice circulation process. Um, so when we send out notice to the public, um, it's typically done two weeks prior to the meeting. We have extended that um, due to COVID and the delays in mailing to three weeks. So when we circulate, we do look for comments from external agencies as well as internal staff. That's what triggered us to go to um, the township's engineer for additional comments. Um, typically, you get the agenda around or just after the same time the notice is out, so it may not always be possible for us to provide those comments to you such in advance. Um, we can look at other methods internally, and we can discuss after about how we could get the comments to you. Um, that's my comment there. In regard to the Unistone on the neighboring property, um, our township zoning bylaw does not regulate interlocking stone on grade um, so unfortunately that may happen um, however they are supposed to comply with their drainage plans for their property and not interfere with any drainage features is my understanding 
Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Mark? Th yeah, through uh, um, uh, Member Gannon to staff. Um, just to clarify with the uh, building officials' comments there, he obviously has some concerns with the uh, below ground structure for the LID um, in that regard. And uh, I understand the confusion with regards to the uh, the uh, paving stones, they're actually a surface and some paving stones are actually designed as an LID, which that property may have and wouldn't be subject to a permit as well, if I understand. Where this particular deck, I see are actual um, brick features for the columns, which would require major excavation and foundations to be put in that could be in conflict. And without knowing where these LIDs are, it would be my suggestion that our recommendation that we defer until the next meeting and we get further information from the not only the uh, township's engineer but the developer's engineer with respect to these uh, underground structures. Mm -hmm. you. Through you, Mr. Chair, that is my understanding as well from the chief bil building official's comments in my discussion with him today is that um, there may be opportunity to relocate such structures. However, he would need to confirm where they are first. His recommendation would be that we receive the comments back from Tom Hardy at RJ Burnside, whom the applicant has contacted before the committee makes a decision. And the committee has the ability to defer the application. So if that's how you wish to proceed, then that's acceptable. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, from the applicant? Go ahead. Am I muted? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I have, as I said, I have no problem if you want to defer it. Uh, I do know that it's just a corrugated pipe that's been installed, probably about five feet below surface. They are movable, um, and they're just attached to the uh, the trough system. Like it, it drives at the um, the trough goes under uh, ground at each point where the, the downspouts are. And, uh, and then they connect up to these corrugated pipes that kind of just gradually release the water into the backyard. It is a sand subdivision. I do all the layout here, and it's <laughs> there's if it rains very heavily, there's, there's no water within hours. Uh, so I don't think we'll have an issue with drainage, but as I said, no problem waiting. Um, as far as the columns go, I do have preliminary drawings now that I can I, I provided them to Henry the other day. I could submit them to the town uh, before the next meeting that I would get on to, and that's fine. Um, they're calling for a two-foot caisson to support those brick uh, piers, so it wouldn't be major um, excavation. I'm just trying to do uh, – I'll probably just hire, you know, Mr. Post on and go with that, and we'll do it through the building permit process. Thank you. So I'm taking it that you don't mind the deferral and you're going to make the recommendation that we defer it to the next meeting, sir? I have no problem with that. If that's the council's decision, then I'm more than happy to reattend. Thank you. I have a motion then moved by or file number A1220, dated October 28, 2020, applicant Emma McKechnie, moved by Henry Vander Whelan and seconded by Lauren Cooney that the application A1220 is hereby deferred until the next available committee meeting of adjustment meeting at the applicant's request. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. I invite the secretary to introduce item 4.2. Minor Variance Application A1320 submitted by Kay Kendall on behalf of the owner of the lands known municipally as 3221 Dobson Road. The purpose and effect of this application is to permit the construction of a detached accessory building 69.67 square meters in size on the subject property, which will result in overage in lot coverage as described as being a maximum lot coverage of 23.5% whereas the bylaw permits a maximum of 20%. Thank you. Is there any additional correspondence or comments? Comments were received from the chief building official on October 28th, advising that he has no objections as the applicant has submitted a building permit application and staff have confirmed that the necessary five meter clearance to the septic distribution pipe is capable of being achieved. 
based on the submitted site plan. Thank you. Can I have the applicant introduce themselves and explain their proposal? I'm, yeah, I just hit the star set. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, this is Jack Kendall. That's uh, uh, 3221 Dawson Road. And how are you tonight? Okay, could you, do you want to explain to us what it is that you're doing, sir? Yeah, uh, I, I want to have a, a, a building in the back for storage. Um, I'm living here with my, my two grandkids and my two children. And um, the, the way the house is designed, there's just not a lot of storage. And, um, I, you know, the garage is fine for, for some storage, but I just, you know, I mean, with the boat and, the, you know, the ATVs and, you know, and all that stuff and the toys, it just, we just don't have the room. So I'm hoping I can, you know, put this building up so I can get my stuff, you know, out of my backyard and front yard. Put it away. Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions relating to this proposal? Thank I you, talked to my neighbors. Sorry. Thank you, Chair. No members of the public have registered to make an oral submission for this application. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your information. Is there any member of committee wishing to make any comments or questions? Go ahead. Um, just one through to the applicant. Um, just a, a question with regarding the existing decks that you're removing. Are you just removing them to uh, be more com within reasonable compliance of the zoning bylaw? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I have a motion here. Moved by Mr. Webster, seconded by Lauren Cooney. File number A1320, dated October 28, 2020. Applicant K. Kendall. Moved by Rick Webster, seconded by Lauren Cooney. That Committee of Adjustment, having given consideration to the applicable provisions of Section 45 of the Planning Act, the official plan of the Township of Springwater, the characteristics of the land in question and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the application dated October 28, 2020 correspondence received and the information presented at the hearing held on October 28, 2020 and the discussion on the matter hereby approve application A1320 as applied for. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, sir. You have a 20-day, there's a 20-day appeal period, so you'll have to wait another 20 days before you can get your building permit. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Can I have the secretary introduce item 4.3, please? Consent application BO420 submitted by C. Jewer, owner of lands known municipally as 1010 Beaver Lane. The purpose of this application is to obtain approval to sever one new residential lot consisting of approximately 0.24 hectares of lot area with approximately 32 meters of lot frontage on Beaver Lane. The applicant proposes to retain approximately 10.26 hectares of lot area with approximately 103 meters of lot frontage on Beaver Lane containing a single detached dwelling and a detached garage. Thank you. Is there any additional correspondence and or comments? Complete copies of all comments received have been provided to the committee. Comments have been received from the County of Simcoe Planning Department on September 21st. Planning staff advised that the proposed lot appears to conform to the criteria outlined in the county official plan. The County of Simcoe Transportation and Engineering Department advised that they have no objection to the approval of the application, provided that a condition that involves a road allowance widening and a daylight triangle being transferred to the corporation of the County of Simcoe is fulfilled. On September 10th, comments were also received from the Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority 
advising that staff's natural heritage concerns related to the consent application have been resolved to their satisfaction and are recommending approval. Hydro One advised that they have no comments or concerns at this time. On October 28th, the Director of Public Works advised that Public Works will require entrance permits for newly created lots if entrances do not currently exist. The Township's super, uh, drainage superintendent added that the subject property is not assessed into any municipal drain, therefore no condition required to meet the Drainage Act. The Chief Building Official also provided comments on October 28th advising that he is pleased with the inclusion of the conditions relating to the septic, existing and proposed, for the proposed severance and added that a lock grading plan will be required at the building permit stage. However, the reviewed reports do provide some indication of drainage patterns in the area, which will assist in further review. Thank you. May I have the applicant introduce themselves and explain, us, explain to us your proposal. Hello everyone and thank you for reviewing my application for the consent of severance. I really appreciate your time. Um, as stated, I'm Corey Jewer, the property owner of Tenton Beaver Lane and joining me today is also my ecologist Lisa Moran from Environmental Azimuth Environmental. She'll be able to answer any questions that you might have about the impact the study that she did on my property. Thanks for joining us, Lisa. Um, I've been working on the severance for the past couple of years. I've been doing it in cohorts with, as she stated, the NBCA um, Township of Springwater County of Simcoe Hydro One and as a myth environmental. So I've taken the, all the recommendations from them and the involved parties and I've ensured that I've met all the, all the requirements that have been requested of me. Uh, I've received comments from all the governing bodies stating that the subject land does not, that it does meet all the requirements for severance and I'm hoping for the board's final approval. Um, I've spoken to my neighbors and signs have been posted for the severance and everyone is welcoming another neighbor to the street if approved. Um, if you have any questions for me or Lisa, uh, please go ahead, appreciate it. Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions relating to this proposal? No members of the public have registered to make an oral submission. Thank you. Does any member of the committee wish to make a comment or ask questions? I see none. I have an application, a motion here. Okay, the application, or the motion, I'm sorry, dated October 28, 2020, moved by Henry Vanderwiel and second by Rick Webster. File number B04-20, applicant C. Jewer. In the matter of consent application B0420 for lands known municipally as 1010 Beaver Lane and legally described as part lot six, concession five east, former township of Vespera, now in the township of Springwater, Roll number 4341010021530. The Committee of Adjustment, having given consideration to the applicable provisions of Section 53 of the Planning Act, the official plan of the Township of Springwater, the characteristics of the subject land and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the subject application dated October 28, 2020, the correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on October 28, 2020 and the discussion on the matter hereby approve the application as applied for subject to the following conditions. And there are eight of them. First, that the applicant meet all requirements, financial or otherwise, of the municipality. Number two, that the applicant provide two copies of the registered survey of the conveyed lands prepared by an Ontario land surveyor. Number three, that the owner slash applicant satisfy and be responsible for all costs to satisfy Section 65 of the Drainage Act 1990, if applicable. Number four, that the applicant provide confirmation that the existing septic system is wholly contained within the boundaries of the retained lands to the satisfaction of the township chief building official. Number five, that the applicant provide confirmation that the proposed lot can accommodate a private septic system to the satisfaction of the township chief building official. Number six, that the applicant obtain, obtain an entrance permit from the Township of Springwater. 
Number seven, that the applicant be required to pay to the township a parkland dedication fee for the severed lot in accordance with the township's parkland dedication policy. Number eight, the applicant shall transfer to the corporation of the county of Simcoe County at no cost a fee simple unencumbered interest in the following. A road allowance widening along the entire frontage of the subject property adjacent to County Road 27 to provide a 20.0 meter right away from the center line of County Road 27 and a daylight site triangle measuring 15 meters east-west by 15 meters north-south at the northwest corner of the property adjacent to County Road 27 and Beaver Lane. Do you understand those, those conditions, sir, before we vote on this? Yes, absolutely, no problem, I do. <clears throat> Thank you. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your time. <clears throat> I ask the secretary to introduce item number 4.4, please. Consent application B0520 submitted by M and J Hillier, owners of lands known municipally as 43 Belmont Crescent. The purpose of this application is to obtain approval to sever one new residential lot consisting of approximately 0 0.50 acres of lot area with approximately 25.61 meters of lot frontage on Belmont Crescent. The applicant proposes to retain approximately 0.46 acres of lot area with approximately 24.97 meters of lot frontage on Belmont Crescent, which contains a single detached dwelling, a deck, and a swimming pool. Thank you. Has there been any additional correspondence or comments received? Hydro One advised that they have no comments or concerns with the proposal at this time. A letter of opposition was received from James and Mary Morrison of 16 Wadi Road on October 25th. An email from Cassian Wildman of 18 Wadi Road was received on October 26th, expressing concern regarding the proposed lot frontage. On October 28th, the Director of Public Works advised that Public Works will require entrance permits for newly created lots if entrances do not currently exist. The township's drainage superintendent added that the subject property is not assessed into any municipal drain, therefore no condition required to meet the Drainage Act. The chief building official provided comments on October 28th, advising that he is pleased with the conditions proposed and noted that lot grading has been reviewed at this time and a lot grading plan will be required to be submitted to the township engineer for review. Thank you. I would ask the applicant to introduce themselves and explain their proposal. Hi, good evening. My name is Jeanette Hillier. My husband, Mike, is also present with me during this meeting. We want to begin by thanking Springwater Township staff. The staff have been extremely knowledgeable and supportive uh, with us through this process. We also want to thank James Murphy, who is president of MK and Company Incorporated, who has joined us for this meeting. Although we have not yet approved, been approved to sever, due to the rationale behind our intent, part of our research in this process included obtaining information about the cost and process of building a house and whether that would be feasible for us. We reached out to MK and Company as we were aware that this builder recently built a house on Heatherwood in Midhurst. We feel it's important to have a builder who is familiar with this community's character, standards, legal requirements and expectations. James has offered to answer any questions related to building on this property if required. We have resided at 43 Belmont Crest for approximately 15 years and have developed strong relationships within our community. Prior to purchasing 43 Belmont, we noted this property's unique wide vacant land to the right of our dwelling. We also noted the addresses on the street were assigned consecutively by twos as typically assigned in residential areas. However, there's a gap between 43 and 47 Belmont Crescent. We took this into consideration as it appeared that this land may have been pre-planned for a 45 Belmont Crescent. As we are now in the latter stages of our lives and our children are grown, we're making plans for our retirement. 
And as a registered nurse working in the community in Simcoe County for the past 27 years, I'm well aware of the importance of living in an accessible home that is conducive to supporting physical needs as well as the importance of a supportive community. Our intent is to sever the property at 43 Belmont Crescent and build a modest accessible bungalow to allow us to remain in this community. Our street allows for a 45 Belmont, which falls in line with the address assignment in the village of Midhurst. As, our included, um, as per our included site plan, we have measured approximate boundaries and dimensions of the subject land, including the part that is intended to be retained, the part that is intended to be severed, approximate locations of septic and proposed new dwelling dimensions and location. Our existing property is noted to be one of the largest on our street and in our surrounding neighborhood in the village of Midhurst. The proposed severance will allow the existing part of the land to be well within the lot square meter requirements for an R1 zone as it is approximately 1,876.414 square meters and the proposed severed land will be approximately 2,025.23 square meters. As recommendations document that the request of frontage be generally 30, 30 meters along with recommendations of lot area, we would like to highlight that our lot area when severed remains over and above the lot area recommendations. As well, our lot quickly pies out branching to a span of more than 80, 83 meters at the back. A modest bungalow can easily be situated in on the severed property and will add to the aesthetics of our neighborhood. We have included 22 comparable uh, comparative frontages under 30 meters surrounding Belmont Crescent, including five properties on Belmont Crescent with, with frontage less than 30 meters. We are happy that our initiative supports strategic pillars of commitment in supporting community development and smart growth development. We are also grateful for this Springwater staff report in support of approval for our application subject to conditions, including financial requirements, two land surveys, costs associated with assessment for lot grading and drainage, relocation of existing septic, as well as a report to approve a new septic system, entrance permit, parkland dedication fee, and minor variance permits for both the severed and retained lots, which we would of course adhere to. In response to comments received from neighbor, neighbors backing onto our property requesting this application be denied, we would like to highlight that although numerous lots were created prior to 1998 that have less than 30 meter frontage in the village of Midhurst, there have also been lots approved that were created in the last 10 to 15 years that have less than 30 meter frontage and were also deficient in lot area. The property is located at 1240, 1244 and 1248 St. Vincent Street, which are outlined in my application, were subjected to consent application B22-06, B23-06, which took two larger residential lots and created one additional residential lot with three parcels under lot frontage, which required approval of minor variance applications A17, A19-06, to recognize the deficient lot frontage as well as a deficient lot area. We're also aware that a similar consent application took place in Hillsdale 16 Mill Street under application B11 to B14 2015, which created four new residential lots and one retained, all of which were under lot frontage, which required approval of minor variance applications A17 to 21 2017 to recognize the deficient lot frontage in all five lots. Our present property has numerous trees at the back that allow for privacy between us and our neighbors. We have every intention to retain as many healthy trees on our property as possible as we value and respect nature and appreciate the privacy for ourselves and our neighbors. In response to concerns about setting a precedence for multiple applications, to my knowledge, we are one of the last lots in the village of Midhurst that has the potential to be severed and has a unique physicality to allow such severance. Finally, we would like to respond to our neighbors' written concern that we are severing our property for financial gain. The rationale behind our intent to sever speaks contrary to this concern. The financial cost of severance, including nature parkland fees, minor variance application fees, septic relocation, entrance permit, water access, building fees, will not result in financial gain. However, what we do stand to gain if approved is a modest accessible bungalow that will support my husband's health condition and support us as we age and as well, it will allow us to continue to remain in the community that we love. 
Thank you in advance for considering this proposal. We have thoroughly enjoyed raising our family, developing friendships, and being active participants in the village of Midhurst. Thank you for your presentation. Are there any members of the public registered to make any oral submissions relating to this proposal? Thank you, Chair. No members of the public have registered to make an oral submission in regards to this publication. Thank you. Members of the committee, do you have any comments or questions of the application? I see none. I have a motion here. Can I have a mover, Henry? Seconder? Seconder? Thank you. Um, date October 28, 2020, moved by Henry Vanderwill and seconded by Rick Webster. File number B05 slash 20, applicant M and J Hillier. In the matter of consent application B0420 for lands known municipally as 43 Belmont Crescent and legally described as part lot part of lot 13, concession four on plan M83 and parts one and four of lot 18 on plan 51R-31865, town, former township of Vespera, now in the township of Springwater, roll number 4341010003107050. That the Committee of Adjustment, having given consideration to the, ap to the applicable provisions of section 53 of the Planning Act, the official plan of the township of Springwater characteristics of the subject land and its surroundings as addressed in the planning report on the subject application dated October 28, 2020. The correspondence received and information presented at the hearing held on October 28, 2020 and the discussions on the matter hereby approve of the application as applied for subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the applicant meet all requirements financial or otherwise of the municipality. Number two, that the applicant provide two copies of the registered survey of the conveyed lands prepared by an Ontario land surveyor. Number three, that the owner applicant satisfy and be responsible for all costs to satisfy section 65 of the Drainage Act 1990, if applicable. Number four, that the applicant provide confirmation that the existing septic system is wholly contained within the boundaries of the retained lands to the satisfaction of the township chief building official. Number five, that the applicant provide confirmation that the proposed lot can accommodate a private septic system to the satisfaction of the township's chief building official. Number six, that the applicant confirm that the proposed lot can be adequately serviced by municipal water. Number seven, that the applicant obtain an entrance permit for the severed lot from the township of Springwater. Number eight, that the applicant obtain a minor variance to permit the proposed efficient lot frontage of both the severed and retained lands. And number nine, that the applicant be required to pay to the township a parkland dedication fee for the severed lot in accordance with the township's parkland dedication. Before we vote on this, the applicant, you understand all those requirements? Yes, I do. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. move on to other business. Is there any other business to discuss this evening from the members of the committee? Go ahead. I'd like to bring forward through uh, the chair to staff um, in the future if it's possible in the staff reports uh, with reference to the uh, development that's on Dobson Road. If you could include in the staff report whether the subdivision has been assume, assumed by the township and that the developer has met all the criteria that's identified in the development agreement. I don't know if that's possible or not. Go ahead. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, yep, I don't see a problem with that. We can consult with Public Works um, and see if they can provide those comments, or alternatively, we could put it in our staff report through discussions with them. Um, I'll look into that further. 
Great. I think it would help the committee members understand that the subdivision has been completed and has met all the requirements of the township, or it's still in the process of, fall, of uh, fulfilling that. Yep, certainly. We'll look into that for you. Thank you. Go ahead, Henry. Just a question. Is that, uh, is that part of the subdivision, like on the uh, east side then of Dobson Road? Uh, sorry, application A13 on Dobson Road was not part of the subdivision, um, just on the west side to over to Berry Hill. Um, through you to, or through you, Mr. Chair, we do have um, an item on the agenda to discuss. If you could do that first and then get to the rest, that would be great. Certainly. Well, I'm just following my script. Uh, we have a, a report from Director Spragnell on uh, application BO320. Would you like to go ahead, sir? Good evening, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, just wanted to provide a verbal update with respect to application B03-20. Um, an appeal has been filed by the applicant uh, on the committee's decision. Uh, to refuse the severances in that proposed location within the uh, the settlement area of menacing. Uh, next steps in the process will be that staff will be waiting to see and receive a package from LPAT, who is the local planning appeal tribunal, uh, which will reference specific um, meeting conference dates and things of that nature. At that point, once the appeal package is received from LPAT, we will be bringing the matter back to the committee for further discussion, most likely in closed session. I'm available to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Members of the committee, any questions? I don't see any. Can I have a, I have a motion here, please? Can I have a mover and a seconder? Thank you. That the verbal report from the Director of Planning regarding consent application be 03 slash 20, Lynn Jail be received. All in favor? Carried. Abstention? Yeah, that's why I'm asking you for an abstention. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussions, matters that we need to discuss? No? Everybody's good? Go ahead, Brianna. Sorry? I'm sorry, you'll have to use the microphone. Sorry, I believe Director Spagnol has something else to add. Oh, okay. Go ahead. My apologies, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted just to uh, revert back to a question <clears throat> that was proposed by Committee Member Webster uh, regarding the, um, I guess, the submission dates and the receipt of comments. Uh, typically, the reason and the rationale for providing all the comments at once is so that anybody tuning into the committee meetings, including committee members, members of public, but also receiving comments from the members of public so that everything is considered all in one meeting and so that it is disclosed in one package to uh, members, committee members, members of the public, so that everybody's essentially on the same page uh, during the meeting process. Similar to comments that are received from the public, sometimes there's information that comes about that may clarify things or that may cause committee members to think to, to defer. And the same goes for staff if they want to change their recommendation based on new and additional information. So sometimes what tends to happen is we will get comments early on in the process and there might be additional comments that may come the day of the meeting. So this way here at the committee meeting, all of the comments are provided at once so that it provides a a more clearer picture as to what some of the issues and what the issues will be uh, on the meeting day. As referred to by planner Belcor, the committee always has the option if it's not comfortable with the information at hand or the timing of the information to defer the application. And essentially uh, that is, if, if the committee feels that that's the more prudent avenue, then, then that's the committee's uh, prerogative. But I just wanted to give just a brief outline as to why all of the information is provided all at once on the committee meeting date. I'm available to answer any questions if, if committee members have any. Go ahead, Mr. Webster. Thank you. And uh, through the chair again and to, to Director Spagnol. So 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 if there if there was a feeling amongst um, 
the majority of the committee then that we should go back out to the site that would be cause for a deferral and and we and we would do so is that correct uh, through mr. chair to committee member Webster I think it, it really does come down to if the committee doesn't have the information available at the meeting if they don't feel if the committee members do not feel that they have enough information available it is is up to them to determine whether or not they feel that it should be deferred on those base on that basis um, as far as additional um, site visits and things of that nature I guess the real I guess the question is whether or not an additional site visit would have any basis or rationale for you know having an impact or, or, or having an impact on the consideration of that particular committee members position moving forward um, in this respect, it's, you know, to my mind, it's one of those matters where the issues are the, the engineered plans where the LIDs might lie with future plans on the property really are the question. And visually committee members may not be able to see where those LIDs are resting on the property. Um, so I think, you know, in, in this, in this instance, the committee chose to defer once comments are provided for that particular application from the engineers, um, you know, that may satisfy the majority of committee members. So, you know, as far as additional site visits, there's nothing wrong with going out for an additional site visit. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not that would be required, at, you know, in the, in the committee members eyes as to whether or not that is needed in order to, to form their, their position. <clears throat> uh, through the chair to you, uh, director Spagnol, then, then I guess I would recommend that the, general comment about LID is very general here. Um, LID can be anything from open ditches to uh, permeable concrete and paving and a host of other things. So to just lay a blanket comment in there that it may not or it may or may not interfere with an LID uh, ingredient to a subdivision, perhaps uh, that could be a little more than just it may or may not um, um, affect the LID on the on on the particular subdivision or property. It, it's there's a lot to LID that um, uh, that can be explained, um, you know, on a per case basis rather than just a blanket statement. I, that's that's all I would recommend. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, Director. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Okay, any other business? I have a motion to adjourn. I have a mover and a seconder. Moved by Rick. Seconded by Henry that the Committee of Adjustment meeting held October 28, 2020 now does end at 748. All in favor? Carried. Thank you.